We greet you from the corner of Clark and Addison here on the north side of Chicago. Wind was blowing out yesterday to start the game. Very different conditions here tonight. It's cold, and the Cubs look to snap a four-game losing streak against the Brewers, and we welcome Cub fans from all over the country watching on WGN America, America's home for baseball. Hi again, everyone, along with Jim Deshays. I'm Len Casper. The Cubs have lost 21 of their last 27 against the Milwaukee Brewers. Ryan Braun has been a part of pretty much all those games. Nori Aoki's been a part of it since the beginning of last year, and they just continue to hit. Yeah, yeah the on, day, on base all day yesterday were Aoki and Braun. The Brewers at the top of their batting order have been outstanding this year, and a lot of it is these two gentlemen here. Aoki, three out of four yesterday, as was Ryan Braun. Braun, a 344 hitter in his career against the Cubs, up around 380 here at Wrigley Field. And Gene Segura, their shortstop, back in the lineup. He's hot, hitting 450 on the season. Travis Wood will get his second start for the Cubs. If he does what he did in his season debut, Cubs will be all right tonight. Good night to pitch. Travis Wood in his uh, first start of the year, and Pittsburgh was outstanding. Six innings of one-hit baseball, did not allow a run, walked a couple, punched out. Four. Just two and six at Wrigley last year was, Tra was Travis Wood trying to get off to a good start here, and he's up against Willie Peralta. Young kid, big arm, 94, 95 mile an hour heater. He'll be tough on a night like tonight. All right, the Cubs playing their first home night game of the season. They are at 500 going back to 1988 at night here at Wrigley. Yesterday, opening day, the Brewers ended up beating the Cubs. A late comeback made it interesting. We'll see what happens tonight in game two. Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Honda, visit your local Honda dealer or go to shophonda.com for current offers. And by AT&T, find out what's possible with products and services from AT&T. Rethink possible. Chicago Cubs baseball in high definition on WGN TV is brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Let's get you the Brewers starting lineup. Aoki red hot hitting 419 weeks. Bat second tonight. Braun Lucroy will be the cleanup man. Gonzalez is at third. Carlos Gomez in center. Segura back in the lineup as we mentioned. Unieski Betancourt is at first. And Willie Peralta hits ninth. Travis Wood ready to work. 
Arkansas native with a long sleeve undershirt tonight. Why not? I've got about seven of them on. And we're underway. <laughs> Travis Wood, uh, as we mentioned, uh, six outstanding innings against the Pirates last Thursday. 3-2 in his career against the Brewers. He was 0-2 against them last year, but he pitched well. He pitched seven innings on two separate occasions, allowed just three runs in each of those starts. So no Ramirez, no Hart. They're still hurt for the Brewers, but still plenty of firepower. And Aoki's been a big part of it in the early going. 2-0 is in there for a strike. Their big day for Aoki had four hits on Sunday. He went three for four with two walks, a double, and a run on Monday. And he punches that one down into the left field corner. It's a fair ball. A leadoff double. Let's take a look at the Cubs defensively. It's brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. You saw Soriano pick up that double by Aoki and left. Jesus has got center covered and sure holds. He's over and right. The infield has a familiar look of Albuena, Castro, Lillibridge, and Rizzo. Castillo behind the plate for Travis Wood, who's going to work out of this leadoff double situation. Well, the Brewers got four first inning runs. That was really the difference yesterday in a 7 4 win. To hold off the Cubs in the ninth. It was a rough one for Ricky Weeks. 0 for 5 with three strikeouts. He batted with runners in scoring position four times and could not come through. And he bats with a runner at second, his first time up here tonight. Well, you've said this already at least on two different occasions. That a night like this, it's more about your mental approach than anything else. Just have to put out of your mind the fact that it feels like mid-January and not yeah. mid-April. <laughs> Got to be mentally tough, boy. It's, it's easy just to moan and gripe and not want to be here, but you got to play. They all count. And the game in April is as meaningful as a game in September. Wind chill at 33 degrees, 41 the temperature, but gusty breeze again. Hardy folks settling under the blankets. Wicks has done nothing against Wood in his career. He's just one out of 16. A 2 1. And he pops it up. Lillibridge circling. And that's out number one. Alan Porter gets the plate tonight. He'll probably be the warmest of the umpires just because he's involved with every pitch. Lane, Gibson, and Wendelstead around the bases. I was umpiring tonight. My strike zone would be four feet wide. Well, you're a former pitcher, so it might always be that big. <laughs> I would always beg for it to be that big. Don't forget about Aoki there. He might try to steal third base on you. Kick and the pitch, and it's off the inside corner. Braun missed the weekend against the Diamondbacks with neck issues. Got right back in there yesterday. Ended up with three hits. Dale Swain talking about Travis Wood's last start. He said, he had maybe the best arm side command he's had as a cub. If you wonder what that means, that means the outside corner to a right handed hitter. Travis has always been a guy who likes to work inside with his cutter on righties. And he goes inside there on a breaking ball that missed. But the Cubs last year really implored him to think about his fastball and cutter toward the outside part. Yeah, you can't afford to, to, to you know, if you're, especially if you're not an overpowering guy, you can't allow hitters to dismiss one side of the plate and just either look in or look away. Cutter's a good pitch for him, but he, you have to be able to establish down and away with a fastball. Braun walks on four pitches. He'll bring up Lucroy, the catcher. It's 
Tonight's game is available in Spanish on your SAP audio setting provided by WRTO, La Tremenda, Chicago's Spanish language sports leader. Now the catcher, Lucroy. 0 for 2 with three walks and two runs. Edwin Jackson said today he thought that was the key at bat of that first inning. When he walked Lucroy, he then walked Alex Gonzalez with the bases loaded, eventually gave up the three run double to Martin Maldonado. And just missed the inside corner, a little front door slider to Lucroy. Fouled off 0 and 2. Uh, about the game in Spanish tonight. Hector Fabregas, Omar Ramos, Cubs Spanish broadcasters. Off the plate inside. One and two. Foul. That one will reach the upper deck. And the way the wind is blowing tonight, anything down the right field line should be pushed well out of play. I thought the ball Maldonado hit yesterday would end up foul, but the wind wasn't blowing in this direction. It was the opposite. Ended up with a three run hit. Going. Runners go. The pitch is in the dirt. No throw by Castillo. A double steal. For Aoki and Braun. Brewers trying to create a little something here. Right off the top, and Aoki and Braun both capable of stealing a base. And the trail runner, he just keeps an eye on that lead guy. Once Aoki goes, off goes Braun. No play to be made anywhere for Castillo. Now the Cubs will pull the infield in. Well, that maneuver right there tells you. All you need to know about tonight versus yesterday, right? That yesterday's a day you don't want to make outs unnecessarily. Tonight, it could be all about one or two or three runs at the most. Given the conditions and the struggles of the Cubs offensively, Dale Swain brings the infield in here to try to cut off this run. All strike three on that outside corner to get Lucroy. He has a couple of words for Alan Porter. And a certain amount of risk too. Obviously, you pull the infield in with two men in scoring position. A base hit likely scores too, but Wood takes care of things all by himself by punching out Lacroix knee-high fastball out of edge. The other part of that infield in part, you talk about the strategy in terms of infielders making plays, cutting off runs, but sometimes it gets into the head of the hitter too. Goes up to the play with a certain approach, and all of a sudden the infield's in, and he's, his brain starts to crank a little bit. Strike on Alex Gonzalez. Played short yesterday with Segura out. He's playing third tonight. As the infield musical chairs continue for Ron Renneke. Inside. Speaking of <laughs> the Brewers manager. They've had all these injury problems and it actually. Got to him. It's his back froze up. Well, he was in his hotel room last night. He ended up in the hospital briefly. And there was some concern that he might not be able to manage this game tonight, but they gave him some good meds, and here he is. He looks like Mother Superior from The Sound of Music. <laughs> if she were, if she were on the you know the church softball team and wearing a hat. Swing and a miss, and Wood gets out of it. And the Brewers strand two in scoring position. Cubs coming up from Wrigley.
Toyota, let's go places. De Jesus, Castro, and Rizzo will start things off. Soriano, Scherholz, and Castillo in the middle. Well, he's been the best Cubs hitter. He homered yesterday. Valbuena, Lillibridge, and Wood will round it out. And let's check out the Brewers defensively. Bron Gomez, Aoki in the outfield. Gonzalez Segura, Weeks, Betancourt, third to first. Jonathan Lucroy behind the plate for young Willie Peralta. Big, strong kid, 23 years of age, 6'2", 240. Strong lower unit. Big backside, strong legs. Uh, remind you a little bit of Bartolo Colon. Primarily a power guy. Fastball slider. He'll mix in the occasional changeup. It's been their top prospect each of the last two years. From Samana in the Dominican Republic. Facing the Cubs for the first time. Here's David DeJesus. So consistent at a 14 game hitting streak in spring training. And just two for 21 to start the regular season. Yes, he got too hot too early. Ground ball to Alex Gonzalez. One out. You can email us Lennon, Lennon JD. Tribune.com. <laughs> We're even. Oh, they gave me the wrong read from last year. I can prove it. Let's go to the booth cam. Facebook. See, it's cold. My brain's not working. My brain's not working. I was set up. That's all right. I, That's my Astros of the yeah, week. Yeah, I right? said the, I dropped the Astro bullpen there the other day. One to one. Game on, okay, pal. You got it. Game on, Brownie. <laughs> One strike on Castro. <laughs> Inside. Fastball at 93. Yeah, and he, he likes to throw that two seamer with and it runs hard in. Good boring action in on right handed hitters. On a night like tonight, those guys are gonna want to be quick to try to get the barrel to that thing. I think he went. Yep. He did. Jerry Lane said so at first. Astro with a couple extra base hits yesterday, a triple and a double. Drives that ball out in the right center, but again, the wind's just going to knock it down. It actually pushes it toward Aoki. Kind of a similar at bat. For the one that ended the game yesterday, our Xfinity home from Comcast. Xfinity from Comcast gives you a front row seat to all your favorite sports. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. The wind was blowing out 28 to 30 miles an hour out of the west, gusting to 40 by the end of the game, north northeast at 11. Somewhere right around the uh, eighth inning, that wind turned around and had it continued to blow out. Castro's ball probably leaves the yard. Thanks to Tom Skilling and Steve Kahn from the WGN Weather Department for giving us those specific numbers. First inning, ninth inning yesterday. Three and zero oh on Rizzo. Fastball misses up. Ball four. The cleanup man Alfonso Soriano still without an RBI. It's got to change here soon. And you know when he gets hot, he'll stay hot.
for several days. Such a streaky hitter. Just hasn't gotten hot yet. We've seen a lot of breaking balls and, and you know. Peralta, as we mentioned, relies heavily on that fastball. And the two seamer moves in towards right handed hitters. That may play to the strength of Soriano. Line up toward Aoki. Good contact for Alfonso, but makes the third out, and we're scoreless after one. To WGNTV.com right now and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner and you'll connect to all the up to the minute stats and information while you're watching from the comfort of your home. Game Zone is sponsored by the Great Escape, pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. Travis Wood worked around a first inning leadoff double. Faces Carlos Gomez, who shows bunt, takes a pitch off the plate in. Swing and a miss. You mentioned his struggles at home last year. He actually has not won at Wrigley Field in nine consecutive starts. Was that a changeup? Like a, maybe a little cutter. Might have been a change. Sometimes that changeup that you try to get the fade down and away to a right of your hand will get around it a little bit and it'll have a little cutting action. Tries the bump, but it comes up and gets his bat again. Keep an eye on all those other games around baseball. Michael Young of the Phillies is a double short of the cycle through four innings. As the Phillies are playing the Mets. G against Lee tonight. Dylan G. Cliff Lee. Eight to two Phillies. Now it's Burke against Lee. <laughs> so much for G. Lee, huh? Yeah, G. Lasted three innings. G. Went three. The lefty on a two-two. It's up and in. Gene Segura, the shortstop on deck. Travis Woods approach is similar to uh, Cliff Lee. His fellow Arkansan with that cut fastball. Out into right center and it will drop down. For a leadoff single. He 
I guess if you could run at all, you'd be tempted to steal bases all night long just to stay warm. Once you get on the base pads, just keep on moving. It is not a high percentage play with Travis Wood on the mound. He's got a good pickoff move. He's quick to home plate. He's been tough to run on in his career. going to get to the wall and Gomez will be able to score easily and one of the fastest guys in the league he goes first to home has to slide didn't need to and Gene Segura first pitch of the series for him and he doubles home Gomez and it's one to nothing. A cut fastball again from Moore trying to get in on Segura. That pitch when it's down though is easier to get to. When the cutter's up and up above the hands a little bit, you tend to that's when you jam guys and get those weak pop-ups. When it's down in the zone, there's right-handed hitter can open up that front side, get the barrel to it, and when they do, they tend to hit it very hard. It's just a question whether they can keep it fair or not. Yeah, I think it's really important for Travis to establish something away. With all these right-handed hitters, they look to me like they're kind of geared for that cutter. So whether it's just a two-seam fastball down and away, or if you can start mixing in some change-ups out there, make these hitters aware of, of both sides of the plate. Unieski Betancourt and a throw. And Segura scrambling back to the bag. Kind of funky the way he turned. The opposite way most lefties would turn trying to make that pickoff move. He's quick. Look like a cat out there. Ben Corey yesterday played third. He's at first tonight. He had never played first before this season. Shortstop by trade. Swing and a miss. They have three shortstops in their infield. Alex Gonzalez, Gene Segura, and Neski Betancourt, three guys whose primary position has been shortstop. Thinking for the most part is if you can play shortstop, you can probably handle just about anywhere on the infield. Sharply hit grounder, picked up by Castro. And safe at first. The throw took Rizzo up the line a little bit. Segura had to hold it second. Still nobody out. Castro does a nice job gloving this ball and then turns and doesn't get on top of that throw. They're going to give him a hit. No error. And Peralta will have a couple of words with the third base coach, Ed Cedar, probably telling him to get down a bunt. Yeah, this is obviously a bunt situation. And as a third base coach, you don't want to have to give the sign, just bunt. Usually they'll tell the pitcher when he's leaving the dugout going on deck or when his situation calls for a bunt just get a bunt down. Rizzo way in already at first. So Peralta will be try to make Valbuena make the play and bunts it foul. It may have been what Cedar was telling Peralta not so much that you're up there to bunt but you know, here's what you should try to do first and second nobody out the Brewers. Uh, this year have scored at least one run 67% of the time. Cubs pitchers have been good at preventing runs in these situations. He went through and the throw goes in the center and the runners will both advance. That'll be a throwing error on Castillo. Sure, it's not easy to get a grip tonight, but you got to be careful. And it's the same thing with Castro on a cold night like tonight. Everything becomes a little bit 
less natural. I mean, the idea was a good one. A bunt through with an aggressive runner taking a big secondary lead. You're always looking to take a shot behind him out there at second base. But if you don't get the grip on the baseball, you're better off putting it in your back pocket. Infield drawn in for an 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. That's the first out. So essentially the same result you would have had had Peralta successfully gotten down a sacrifice bunt. Might be the last guy you want to see coming to the plate right now for the Brewers. I agree. Aoki already with four hits in the series and has reached base six times. On the inside corner for a strike. Well, Aoki so good at hitting that ball the other way last time up. And in this situation, the last thing a hitter wants to do is roll over on the ball and hit a weak ground ball. So typically, when you're thinking that, you keep it staying inside the ball, thinking middle of the way. That way you're sure or more likely to get the ball airborne. So we're trying to combat that by working the inner half. And we'll see if Aoki makes an adjustment and cheats on one and tries to pull. He uses the whole field. Kick in the 1 1. He pops it up, but the wind pushes that one way out of play. This is kind of interesting. Decision time now for Wood and Castillo. They've done all their work inside on Aoki here. So you just continue to pound in, or do you feel like he's going to look in there and you might be able to beat him with that cutter away? On the ground, Castro will fire to the plate, throws off the mark, out of the glove of Castillo, and Segura's in, and it's two to nothing. So three errant throws here in the second inning. A nice job by Woody, makes a good pitch, gets his ground ball right to Castro, who hurries the throw. He had plenty of time to get. You know, it looked to me like he's just not feeling comfortable making throws. His throw to first, and now this throw home. Just trying to unload in a hurry. He had time to take an extra beat and get on top and make a good, strong throw to home. He's kind of flipped that ball. So first and third with one out. Still trying to figure out the scoring. We heard fielder's choice E6. And an RBI, but I'm not sure you can get the RBI yeah, and the air. Yeah, it's one or the other. I don't know how you get an RBI on that. I'm going to say no RBI. At least for now. That's low for a ball on weeks. There's great opportunities forced the pitcher to make more pitches. High that time. 2 and 0. We talked about the need to be mentally tough on a night like tonight. Now doubly so for Wood. You're out there in adverse conditions. It's cold. It's windy. And now things are starting to go haywire behind you. Plays aren't being made. Keep on battling. That's a strike. Woo. 2 and 1.
Three hits, two errors, two runs in the inning. Still only one out off the outside. Ryan Braun's on deck, so it would not be a great idea to walk Weeks. Have to face Braun with the bases loaded. If ever there were a situation where Ricky Weeks could sit fastball, this is it. Although Wood likes to throw that cutter so much, that may be the pitch he's most comfortable throwing for a strike. It is a strike. Weeks has already taken a step toward first, three and two. Eighty seven mile an hour fastball inside edge bottom of the knees. That's a good three one pitch. Got a strike got back in the count without throwing a cookie. Long look at Aoki who takes off the pitch is low and they are loaded. And it will be Ryan Braun. He walked Ryan in the first. Three grand slams for Ryan Braun in his career. And we told you earlier about his numbers against the Cubs and in this ballpark. He's also been very good against Travis Wood. Six out of 17. That's 353 for a batting average with a home run in his career. Uh, for Wood. There are the numbers overall with the bases loaded. Big moment in this game early on. Brewers are trying to break it open. Ground ball. Diving stop. The flip. And Starlin really couldn't get it out of his glove. Everybody's safe. That'll be an infield RBI single for Ryan Braun. Cubs just cannot get it out here. That was a good play just to stop it and keep it from the outfield, but he could not get it out of his glove. Eats this ball on the ground, but it's got a lot of top spin and a lot of pace. It gets stuck in the glove, the backhand flip, obviously not in time. Even if he gets it cleanly out, he's not going to be able to get much on that little flip. He probably doesn't get weeks anyway. A visit from the pitching coach. And they're still loaded and it's Lucroy. Thirty three with the bases loaded. Try to turn two here six. Four, three to get out of the inning. So after the visit from Chris Basio, Wood gets out of it, but they get three runs.
TV.com. The blog is sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your nationwide insurance agent serving the area for 34 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff at JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. I have a post on yesterday's weather. We have Ernie Banks singing the stretch on the blog as well. Fergie Jenkins will sing the stretch tonight. The Hall of Famer. Well, some work to do. Cubs trail by three as Nate Sherholtz takes ball one. Three runs, two earned. One Milwaukee in the top of this second. Swing and a miss. One and one. We've seen that two seam running fastball from Peralta that time, a four seamer up at the zone. Sitting around 92, 93. He's been known to hit 97 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. that's nasty. 94 power sinker there. Has the action of a changeup, but it's 94 miles an hour. Mentioned he's put together 6'1, 245 pounds. Popped up out into center, Carlos Gomez. The chair on the Cubs as they battle the Rangers here at Wrigley Field on Wednesday, the 17th. It's a 7.05 game, and the first 10,000 fans will receive a special Cubs winter hat. Compliments of Pepsi to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Come in handy tonight. Castillo with a home run yesterday. Straight away center and a strike call. Bad news for Cardinals closer Jason Mott. Yes, he's got a ligament tear in his elbow. And might possibly be looking at Tommy John surgery. Wow. This has not been the year of the closer, has it? The no, start the year. No, it has not. Been some real struggle, some turnover already, and Certain clubs, including this one, with Marmol being relegated to middle relief. Steele waves at strike three. First punch out for Peralta. That's a good complimentary pitch to that boring fastball in on the righties. Our down breaking slider pitching with a little confidence with the three run lead. And Luis Valbuena takes strike one. Another topic of conversation before the game was Valbuena's decision yesterday in the first inning. Runners at first and second. Ricky Weeks hit that ground ball to him. He decided to throw home. They got Aoki caught up in a rundown as opposed to go for the inning ending 5 4 3 double play. And the consensus in the Cubs clubhouse was that it was the right decision. And a base hit. You take a shot at the double play. If you don't turn it, you give up a run. Inning continues anyway. And if you get the double play, the inning ends. But uh, probably is no right or wrong answer. Uh, it's just a real instinctive, yeah. quick, reflexive decision. For me, it's one of those. It's a great. It's a you know. It's one of those gray area plays. You, know, you watch certain games, you see certain plays, and you know definitively. Oh, I made the wrong throw. He should have gone here with that ball. And that was one where I think you know you just got to trust the player's instincts to to do what he felt like he needed to do. There's no guarantee. They were going to get weeks with two long throws, and he was busting it pretty hard out of the box. So that would have been a, a very difficult double play to convert. Well, and it's all always your judgment after the fact is colored by what resulted. 
and the Brewers would end up scoring four runs in the inning. Little did we know at the time that would happen. So it's, I guess it's an easy second guess. Only based on yeah. what transpired after. Edwin Jackson had no problem with Valbuena's decision. That's really the beauty of baseball. You know, you can watch a game and hash it over, talk about it afterwards over a drink. Still lingers the next day. I'm sure a lot of fans that are watching the game that watch yesterday's game are saying, no, you guys are dead wrong. He should have turned two. Went and I talked to David Bell about it today, and he, he thought Val Buena made. Uh, David, that was David's point. He said either way, because I, I think either way would have been it was a, would have been a good try to try to get two, but I think he made a smart play going home as well. Two and one on Lillibridge. Brent still seeking that first hit as a Chicago Cub. He's 0 for 14. Fouled back. Um, didn't Craig Council a couple of years ago have a really long over streak to start the season? Or? I think it was 0 for 45 at least. Two two to Lillibridge is inside. Let's go back to the play we were talking about yesterday. Very first inning, first and second, first and uh, third rather. And they did get Aoki. That's the other thing to remember. <laughs> they yeah, got an out. And you got a pretty good look at it there. You know, the ball was hit with some pace, but it wasn't a rocket. And you saw where Valbuena was playing. And two long throws. You, you could see that in that shot we showed you. Weeks busting it out of the box. 3-2, swing, and a miss to end the inning. Cubs get their first hit but fail to score. They're down 3-0 at the end of two. Sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Hey, the Chicago Cubs are committed to a new season. Are you? Tickets are available throughout the season, especially for this homestand that will also feature the world champion Giants and the Texas Rangers. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Night game tomorrow to wrap up this series, and then the Giants come in for four starting on Thursday. Eight Brewers batted in the second as they scored three times. Alex Gonzalez swings at the first pitch. Infield pop up will be handled by Brent Lillibridge, and 
Shallow right. Bring up Gomez who started that rally with a single. To lead off. The second. Well, an ejection tonight in Cleveland. Carlos Carrasco drilled Kevin Euclid. After Robinson Cano hit another homer, I think his third of the series. Throwing a Euclid for he didn't hit it. Right. Jared Weaver is going to be out at least a month. He's got a non displaced fracture in his non pitching elbow. How did he do that? Got hit by a line drive on Sunday. Woo. Tigers DH Victor Martinez did not play today in their win over the Blue Jays. He cut his thumb on the bat rack at Comerica. On the Carrasco ejection, we should note he's coming off uh, suspension for drilling somebody. So, a repeat offender, he might be in trouble again. In the left, Castro out. Soriano's in. It'll be the shortstop to make the grab. Yeah, that's, that's the danger. And, and you know, when you start drilling guys, you get that reputation. So even if you miss and you just happen to hit a guy with an errant pitch, people think you're throwing at him. It's hard to shake a reputation in this game. It was a six-game suspension for hitting Billy Butler two years ago. Ground ball backhanded by Valbuena. Strong throw to get Segura. That's the inning Travis Wood needed. Bottom three. Three nothing Milwaukee.
one of Ford's many fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. All right, last night, you tell me, was this a strike or not? Joe Nathan, save number 300, 3-2 three, pitch, called strike three. Rangers beat the Rays. Oh, Zobris yeah. didn't like that's, it. That's right there. Joe Madden didn't like it. A.J. Przinsky, though, the catcher. He's always in the middle of it, and it always works out for his team as Betancourt has to make the catch. Windblown pop-up. Travis Wood retired. One away. Let's get one more look at that pitch last night. I don't know what Zobris is complaining about. That ball is right there. <laughs> Watch. The, the reaction of Nathan is the best. I don't know if we'll get in that shot. But there, there's one... One Says, bit of video wow. with him, he's going, wow, I can't believe it. And Joe Madden out there pleading, and Andy Fletcher, likewise, probably telling Joe, look, I blew it, man, but there's no mulligans. We're going to have to live with this, you and I. Good thing it wasn't a close game. Yeah. One run game. Five for the final, and in all fairness, it was Marty Foster, the uh, oh, Marty Foster, home plate umpire, not Andy Fletcher. Not Andy Fletcher. But uh, Foster did come clean later and said, "If I had to do it again, I would not have called it a strike." Yeah, think. Joe Madden, though, able to let bygones be bygones, and he sent a lineup card over to Joe Nathan for that 300 save. Today, so it's gesture by the Rays skipper. Wonder if he had any notes on it. A little asterisk. Fouled off by De Jesus. Still 0 2 on David. The Chicago Cubs baseball summer camps offer children ages 5 to 13 of all abilities the ultimate major league experience for seven one week sessions in various Chicago area locations. Join fellow teammates for a week of top-notch baseball instruction, exclusive access, and unforgettable moments. Cubs.com slash camps. Well, hit hard foul. Well, the Cubs threw the ball around in the second inning. It's that kind of night. It's very cold. You know, the longer the night goes on, the worse it gets for the position player. So if you can have some long at-bats, keep the other team out there in the field, make them make some plays. Maybe they'll kick it around a little bit. Foul, that, tip, strike three. That is flat out nasty there. Now, there are a lot of guys that throw two seam fastballs that get a little running action on it that they call sinkers, but they aren't really sinkers. They're just two seamers with a little run. This guy's got, he's got a pure, hard, Downer sink, sinker at you know 95 miles an hour. I don't understand why he was rated so highly by all the scouting services and all the publications. Most people's top 100, number one with the Brewers. Major League debut last year, spent most of the year triple A's. Numbers weren't great. On a hop, and Weeks tried to barehand it because he knew once he backed up, wasn't going to have a lot of time. It'll be a hit for Castro to keep the inning alive. Ball's riding in on Castro, fights it off, shatters his bat, uh, but it dies a hero. It's got a little funky spin on it, too. Uh, looking at the replay, though, now, I think Weeks did have more time than he thought. Outside to Rizzo. I think the spin on that ball messed him up a little bit, too.
Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. First night game of the year. This ties the mark for the earliest night game in terms of home game number. Back in 89, the Cubs played their second home game of the season at night on April 5th of that year. Since 88, when they installed lights, 508 home night games. The Cubs have won 254 and lost 254. Do you know if that's appreciably better or worse than their daytime record over that stretch? I'm going to guess it is better. But I haven't added it up. No, let me check that. Their day record's got to be better. So I'm guessing the Cubs are over 500 at home 88. since 88. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably way better. Three one is inside ball four and the Cubs have two on for the first time. Patience. By Rizzo there. Uh, three one not going after that inside fastball. Just keep the line moving for quite a little traffic. Soriano an opportunity. Soriano hit the ball hard in his first at bat, lined out to right field. First time tonight. Walt under a little duress. See how he handles it. I mean, you got his stuff and his movement. You can really simplify the game. It's you know, he's not trying to trick people with off-speed pitches. He's thrown very few breaking balls. It's just a line and that heavy sinker at 94. Keep it down, you put it in good spots. You don't have to do a whole lot else. Here's Soriano, two singles and two runs yesterday, and JD mentioned lined to right. His first time up tonight. Seven time All Star Soriano, 11 consecutive 20 homer seasons. Segura will get it to Betancourt, and that's the inning. Cubs get a two out single and a walk, but do not score. Three nothing Brewers after three.
bachelorette parties. Individual and group tickets are available for all games as Betancourt high in the air to left. Soriano barely had to move. For more details, go to WrigleyvilleRooftops.com or call 773-248-ROOF. Peralta will bat leading three to nothing. Guessing they're not selling a whole lot of cold beer. Tonight. Well, if they are selling beer, it is definitely cold. <laughs> they're trying. You are not going to hear from anybody tonight. The beer is too warm. Look at this guy with no. Oh, oh man. Okay. Ooh. Must be a mailman in the daytime. Enjoying a beverage tonight. 3 and 0 on the pitcher. Probably be taking two. There's one. Whoop. He walked him. Walks a big issue for the Cubs in yesterday's ball game. They issued eight of them. Three intention. Still, that's a big number. Some walks are justified. It's around a guy, you're trying to make tough pitches to a dangerous hitter, but this one is one that drives you nuts. One out walk to the opposing pitcher. All right, now you've done this before, right? You put the jacket on at first base. I, I guess I haven't looked at if it's even in the rule book. Can other Position players put a jacket on if they'd like to on the basis. I don't know. I've That's never seen it. Question. Is that just a courtesy for pitchers? Liner is caught by Castro. Sends Peralta back to first. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Uh, be a bold move, though, wouldn't it, for a position player to ask for a jacket? I think his manliness would be questioned. I mean, it's been reserved for pitchers only. It would be uh, fined heavily in kangaroo uh, court. Rocketed foul by Weeks. Had a couple of on this date in baseball history notes for you. April 9th, 1974. Ray Kroc, then the <laughs> owner of the San Diego Padres. Grabbed the public address microphone during a game and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I suffer with you. I've never seen such stupid baseball playing in my life. That was as the Padres were dropping a 9 5 decision to the Astros. The commissioner ultimately made him apologize to the fans. They should have been apologizing to the players, I guess. The right. fans probably weren't offended. The San Diego Chicken, coincidentally, Made its debut that day. I gotta remember to ask Fergie Jenkins about this one on this date in 1976. Pretty well hit, not going anywhere with a wind, slicing, and it's caught by De Jesus. Jim Palmer and Fergie in a one nothing battle.
My goodness, it doesn't get any better than that. The Budweiser patio gives you the opportunity to all do all of this in prime home run territory. If you're interested, call 773-404-4200 or visit Cubs.com slash Premier. That's the Premier party spot. Great spot out there. Cubs will bat here in the bottom of the fourth, trailing three to nothing on a very cold night. We're now in the 30s. A stiff breeze coming out of the north northeast. That guy's got his cowboy hat on. I would wear one if, if it had like the drop down earmuffs. I'd be all over that. I don't allow those out on the range. I'd be like being a position player asking for your jacket to run the bases. You always won. Strike one on Sherholtz. Willie Peralta has been pretty impressive here early. To the comparison early in the game to a Bartolo Colon. Picked up by Gonzalez. Strong throw and he got him. Because of his size, but his approach to pitching is similar to Colon at his best in his prime. A lot of those power two seam fastballs. Really would attack the strike zone. He doesn't quite have that command, but he certainly has the stuff. Castillo struck out swinging in the second. Location there for Peralta, one strike. It's late in San Diego, and the Padres in their home opener lead the Dodgers four to three. Move the fences in. Not the first time at Petco Park. Fences in there. They moved him in in, in uh, Seattle at uh, Safeco. From the Right field porch over to the gap in right center, and from 402 to 391, and they lowered the fence to just under eight feet, which matches the rest of the wall. Base hit in the right, 402 to 390 in left center, and they also moved the team's uh, the visitors' bullpen behind the home bullpen, where it was down the right field line. Time Peralta doesn't get that movement on the fastball, throws it over the heart of the plate, a little inside out swing, and still remains Cubs' hottest hitter. What are your thoughts on you know, Comerica Park, Petco, Safeco Field this year, uh, City Field, at one time or another? They've moved the fences in at all those parks. They'll go four, six, that's it. Well, Buena hustling beats the double play ball and keeps the inning alive. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because I think the bigger ballparks were built or designed or conceived at least during this era of huge offensive numbers. Guys were hitting home runs all over the place, and they said, well, we need to make it more fair for pitchers. Now the game is starting to, to swing back the other direction, and maybe it's PEDs or lack thereof, or, but for whatever reason, uh, run scoring has been down the last couple of years, and we're seeing it trending down. Strikeouts are way up. I think it's because GMs are sick of their position players complaining. There's that too. There's players that are whining a lot. There's no crying in baseball, but there's a lot of complaining and whining. But I, but I, you know, I get it because I do think the game has shifted back to the pitching a little bit, and I, and I, I think it's a good thing. I think pitching and defense creates a lot of drama, low run, close games. The 0-1 to Lillibridge. 
Now one ball, one strike. It's a good piece in the uh, Wall Street Journal the other day talking about the increased velocity of major league pitchers. Pitchers in general, talking about kids and how much harder they're throwing, the training techniques, the biomechanics, all the things that they're doing to increase velocity for pitchers. Also in an era where sabermetrics is telling players you have a lot more value if you can hit the ball out of the ballpark. So you're seeing, seeing a lot more strikeouts because you're seeing big swings and big fastballs. And it's going to be interesting to see if players start to make an adjustment. If guys are willing to shorten their stroke and just try to hit a line drive somewhere. Especially with the shifting that's going on too. I mean there's a lot of things conspiring against the hitters right now. Bounced foul. I was talking. Earlier today with Dave Sapel about his at bat in the ninth against Jim Henderson. And he admitted. And he had a couple of good hacks at some good fastballs. He said, I should have shortened my swing. I got a little long in that spot. Yeah, I think he got caught up in the moment with the bases loaded. And, you know, looking fastball. Knew he was going to get a fastball, so he's taking some big swings. Ron Washington, the manager of the Rangers, likes to say. To try to be a hero, you're going to come up a zero. Got to take what the game gives you. Three, two, and oh, called strike three. A late call by Alan Porter. And the inning comes to an end. And temporary solutions for a better banking experience for everyone. Fifth Third Bank, the Curious Bank, member <laughs> FDIC. You look really goofy in your hat. I'm all about function <laughs> at the moment. Whereas I fashion. look really cool. April My 17th, hat. you can get one. Yeah. We're ahead of the curve. Braun has walked. Stolen a base, knocked in a run with a single. He's one for one. He's hitting 533 at the moment. He hits that at the end of the year, that'll be a record. <laughs> a 
go. That's the one right there. And that outside corner forced the hitter to contemplate having to go out there and get that. Then you can throw that cutter in on his knuckles. It's the arm side command that he exhibited last time in Pittsburgh. Swing and a miss. I want you to know I got a text from the great Dan Rohn. He said that hat is money. Well, Dan likes it. That's good enough for me. Like Little League for a second there, heard somebody yell swing. Swing batter batter. <laughs> hey batter batter batter. He can hit, he can hit. Evening wears on those masks higher and higher. A little high. Three and two the count with Luke Roy on deck. Normally, Aramis Ramirez would be standing in that on deck circle, but he's on the disabled list with a sprained knee. Got it. Called strike three. Now Braun got caught looking there. He was he was thinking cutter in. He looked like he moved off the plate a little bit and was getting ready to unload on something in or half and just couldn't pull the trigger when Wood went away with the fastball. No argument from Braun. He knew he had been had. Has batted twice and has made three outs. Six four three double play ball in the second. So the Tigers beating the Blue Jays today. A homer and four knocked in for Miguel Cabrera. That's lined out into right center. Sureholtz will cut it off, and Luke Roy has a single. I wonder if the uh, home plate umpire tonight, JD, is going to ask each player to remove the mask to make sure that. Somebody has it. <laughs> they keep sending Braun up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Braun makes uniform. it out. He goes in and changes the shirt and comes up to somebody else. Gonzalez has struck out and popped out. Pitch. In the dirt, ball one. Corey Hunter had the 2,000th hit of his career among the three he garnered today. And pretty high praise for his new teammate. What did he say? He said he's the best right handed hitter I've ever seen. Pujols is pretty good. Saw in the last decade or so. Cabrera is the best hitter I've ever seen. Tap foul. Remember at the convention this winter when we were talking with the 
the new guys, and we were having that debate about the MVP, and uh, Scott Feldman and Scott Baker both chimed in that they thought Cabrera was deserving, and the point they made, at least one of them, is that you know, Cabrera is just he's the toughest out. He's the last guy you want to face in a critical situation in the American League. Slow start for the Blue Jays. They're two and five. Of course, when you talk about Cabrera, you, you focus so much on the offensive part of the game. You have to consider what Mike Trout is, what he does defensively, and the speed and everything else he brings to the table. And that's why I think he's the better player. Cabrera may be the better hitter. Gonzalez went around. And Wood has his fifth strikeout. It'll bring up Carlos Gomez, who can really go get him in center. This is last week against the Rockies. Carlos Gonzalez bidding for a home run, perfectly timed. What a grab by Gomez. Hey, he's one heck of an athlete. He can do everything on a baseball field. It's just a matter of being consistent. Got that strut working after that catch. <laughs> it's like a John Travolta, Saturday Night Fever. He moves up in the box and it's a fly ball to right. That's Sherholtz to end the inning. Bottom five, three, nothing to score. Creating contemporary solutions for a better banking experience for everyone. If their bank, the Curious Bank member, FDIC. Watch Carlos Gomez's feet. He actually moves up in the box as Wood kicks and deals. Sniffing out that off speed pitch, and he got an off speed pitch, but he was still out in front of it and caught it off the end of the bat. Wood will. Lead off the Cubs fifth. Ozzie Smith used to do that. Yeah. So he's guessing there that he's going to get yeah, yeah. change up yeah, or something. Yeah. Hal Morris, if you remember Hal Morris, he used to always be moving his feet in the box, but that's just the way he hit. Dancing around in there, happy feet, but he could hit. It's 
See Peralta looking at his hand. Tough to grip on a night like this. It's in the 30s. Yeah, absolutely. Look like a cue ball sometimes. And I think that's why we've seen him go with mostly the power game with that sinking fastball. The dexterity sometimes that you need to, to throw the breaking pitch the field just isn't there. 3 2 to Woods, swung on and missed. One away. Hey, MLB.TV is celebrating 11 years. Join the millions of fans and subscribe today. Watch every out of market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV today. MLB.TV, baseball everywhere. De Jesus, nothing for two. One for three. Jumps on that first pitch. That was a one out single. Hey, just too good, too consistent a hitter to keep down for a long time. He's had a tough stretch here from the outset, but you know, he, for the most part, he's had good at bats. He's been making a lot of quality pitches. He's been running up on some borderline pitches. This time, that two seamers running away doesn't have a lot of sink. He just stays on it, pings it to left. A stroke. Eric Nathanson tweets us: Only the pitcher may wear a jacket. He learned that at umpire school. Well, there you go. I always the, the, the rare times that I was on base called for it. I like to put it on because you felt like you're part of a special fraternity. Yeah, I get to wear a jacket out here. Milk my time on base and back in the day with the Astros. They, we had these cardigans. They were like Mr. Rogers cardigans. They're rainbow colored, zipped up. Chop to Gonzalez, and he throws it away. Both runners will advance a base, so the Brewers with an error. The error will be charged on the thrower, that is Alex Gonzalez. Cubs took their turn throwing it around, having a hard time handling on this cold night, and now the Brewers open the door for the Cubs. It appeared to be a relatively easy play for Gonzalez. You can see clearly he didn't get the good feel as he reached in to pull that ball out of his glove. And again, it's it's the cold, the fingers, you know how it is if you're out working in the cold and you're you're trying to untie a knot or do anything with your fingers. It just doesn't feel right. Had two trips tonight. He's walked both times. Inside. Best chance by far the Cubs have had in this game. Second and third with only one out. It's away and Lucroy able to locate it. De Jesus made the right choice. Get a look at De Jesus coming down the third baseline with the delivery ball in the dirt. He thinks about it and realizing that he did not get far enough away from Lucroy for him to advance. He's down three runs. Not going to take any silly chances on the bases.
kick and the 2 1. Late swing, 2 and 2. Ah, oh, well, there's a jacket. Yeah, was a nice collar. Yeah, yeah, the windbreaker. Yeah. How about the batting glove on? Yeah, what's glove? up with that? Well, that was in spring training when they take the pictures for the bubblegum cards. I'd probably just gotten done with a round of uh, tremendous batting practice. <laughs> Threw on your glove. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball will score a run. Weeks will get Rizzo. Anthony will get his sixth RBI. De Jesus in. It's three to one. Cubs get on the board. There you go. Most consecutive strikeouts start of game. Eight. 86 record breaker. I'm more impressed by the little bit of hair I got poking out from under my hat. Salas at third. And that'll do it. Cubs benefit from an error and make it three to one. Captain Morgan, raise your glass always in moderation to life, love, and loot. Hall of Famer Fergie Jenkins will conduct the stretch. I referred to this game the uh, previous inning. 1976, April 9th, on this date, Jim Palmer of the Orioles and Fergie, who was with the Red Sox that year, battled. And it was 1 0. Palmer got the better of Fergie that day. They would combine for 552 wins. Two and zero on Segura. Back in the day when there were a lot of one nothing, two one ball games. Front of the rotation guys would stay in there and go the distance. Woo. Segura bunted it through it. It's two and two. Segura had a thigh bruise. Knocked him out of the game on Sunday and kept him out of action yesterday. Well, is not a bad idea on a night like tonight. How difficult it is to handle. 
Easy play for Sherholtz. Nice job by Travis Wood settling in after that bumpy second and a fair bit of it not on him because of the miscues behind him but he gave up that three spot. That's a big double play ball to end the inning off the bat of Jonathan McCroy and is really taking control of the ball game from that point. They allowed a couple of base runners since the second and there you see the efficiency after scuffling a little bit in the first two he's doing a real nice job. Strike one. And Betancourt. Fouled back 0 and 2. Rookie Hector Rondon getting loose. Him up Castillo over near the on deck circle. Two outs. I, I noticed uh, Deonor Navarro is actually, I believe, born. That's that's Deonor, right? No, that's uh, Franklin Fox. Okay. If Navarro might be just trying to stay loose. Peralta yeah. leading three to one, batting here for the third time. And that one is going to get through for a base hit. Peralta in his uh, first start of the year had a base hit. It was one for two in that game. He's one for two here, here tonight plus a walk. Third career hit. Jacket comes on. <laughs> you guys, there you go. You guys got too much time on your hands down there. Tommy Mansky. Out of bunt. <laughs> Yes, that'll strike the heart and the fear of pitchers everywhere. Did you just say strike the heart and the fear of? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I probably did. I know what you mean. <laughs> strike the heart and the fear of pitchers everywhere. Jimmy Marquette went to Butler. <laughs> strike fear in the heart of pitchers everywhere. Your whole life is just one long string of cliches. You tend to jumble them up every now and then. It's punched down the ground to Valbuena. We'll feed Lillibridge, and that's the inning. They leave one. Middle of the sixth, <laughs> 3 1 Brewers.
your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers as reliable as the cars themselves. Night to bring a blanket, an extra jacket, gloves, long johns, hand warmers, whatever it takes. Scarf. Body heat. Yeah, a loved one. Get close. Sherholtz, Castillo, and Valbuena against Willie Peralta. Tomorrow night, Scott Feldman will make his Wrigley debut. Kyle Loesch for the Brewers. Ball one to Sherholtz. First pitch change up that time from Peralta. Coming off that fastball, at least for one pitch. Bounced in. Gonzalez down. Now up with it. The shortstop playing third base. Makes up for that error earlier. Nice play. So essentially, the, the Brewers have four middle infielders in their infield with shortstops. Playing first and third. Segura, their everyday shortstop now, and Ricky Weeks at second. So it's like a, a football team putting their hands team on the field for the onside kick. All these good defenders out there. Ball one to Wellington really stands on top of that plate. Sharply hit ground ball right to Weeks. Not been much in the air tonight off of Peralta. Ground ball out. Punched out five. Pitch to Valbuena is a strike. Peralta has been pretty efficient. 75 pitches made. Ready to work, but Valbuena was not. Nothing in two. Wow. That guy's got to be freezing. Is that a sweater with the sleeves pulled up? He may be numb. So warm, he actually rolled his sleeves yeah. up. He just checked out of the hospital, too. Looked like he had a hospital wristband yeah. on or something. Speaking of heat, 96 on that fastball. Yeah, well, and the Brewers have had problems in their bullpen, so they may ask the young righty to, to go deep into this ball game. A lot of times with a young pitcher, you try to create a soft landing for him when he first breaks into the big leagues. He has just a handful of major league starts under his belt. A few last year. This is his second this year. So a lot of times you you don't ask a lot of a young pitcher like that. But given the issues in their bullpen and the way he's throwing, if I'm Ron Renicky, I just keep sending him back out there. Call him no neck. It's 
three two on the way. Got in on him and a ground ball to Weeks. This will do it for the Cubs in the sixth. Lots of ground ball outs for Peralta. Still three to one. Dragons with its time. Well, it is great to have with us Fergie Jenkins, a Hall of Famer, greatest pitcher in Cubs history. And these were the nights, and they actually weren't nights, days when you dominated here at Wrigley Field. You dominated pretty much whatever the <laughs> weather was, but. Well, I enjoyed uh, the wind blowing in and. Uh, I have a chill to it. I, I just think that uh, the hitter's got a chance to understand that the pitcher's got to dominate sometime during the season. <laughs> and early in the year was a good time for that. Well, you pitched Whoa. in some extreme conditions April at Wrigley Field and then July and August in Arlington. Right. Uh, it didn't matter, cold or hot weather. Hey, how about pitching in Jerry Park with three inches of snow on the ground? <laughs> Gee, Park Jerry in Park Montreal. Jerry, yeah. Oh, jeez. No, I, I, you know, you have to go out there. We had a four-man rotation, and you know, I had a great manager, Leo DeRocher, and Leo was not going to say no. And you couldn't convince him that, uh, hey, the condition wasn't suitable for you to go out there and pitch. Uh, either it was Kenny Holson, myself, Bill Hands, or or Rich Nye or Joe Necro. Boom, we had to be out there. Did you change your game at all when it was really cold like this? Did you eliminate a pitch or were you able to throw everything? I pretty much could throw everything. Uh, Randy Hunley and I or oh Kenny Rudolph. We had a game plan before the game started and and and, and hard in was the number one factor. Let these guys know you're out there. I mean a lot of bees in those bats. Guys don't want to swing at that hard fastball inside especially about bell high inside. Three two swing and a miss. We're out number one. Uh, Fergie, we mentioned uh, and on this date in baseball history, April 9th, 1976. Do you remember matching up with Jim Palmer? The Orioles won nothing. He actually got the better of you that day. But Is that right? Okay. Matchup of future <laughs> Hall of Famers. <laughs> oh, one of the rare ones you lost. Well, yeah, okay. Well, hey, I've, I've lost a lot of one nothing ball games. <laughs> hey, one year, five times one to nothing. Well, that's wow. what we were talking about back in the day, you know. And yeah. You and Gibson and Seaver, you guys would hook up. It was you know, Drysdale. Two was, two was <laughs> oh, enough yeah. to get it done most yeah, days. You're right. I Absolutely. mean, unfortunately, uh, some days it just didn't work out for the home team. We'll take a break. Pitching change here at Wrigley. We'll be back.
after Rondone. He'll have to face Ryan Braun, one out here in the seventh, and we're with Hall of Famer Fergie Jenkins. We actually saw you a lot at the ballpark in Arizona with your friends. Yeah, I had, uh, oh, jeez, Vita Blue, Blue Moon Odom, uh, Bert Campanaris, Raleigh Fingers, Hall of Famer, Gaylord Perry, so many guys, John Warden, George Foster. We're signing autographs for numbers of different charities, different ballparks, and I think... Uh, in the end, we probably uh, donated quite a, quite a bit of money to these different charities. That's great. How about Braun trying to bunt? <laughs> I don't know. The guy's a third hitter in the lineup, he's, and he's a power hitter bunting. 41 homers last year. Well, anything to get on, right? Yep. Well, we're having fun with the jacket. Did you put the jacket on when you got on base on a night like this? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, I wore long sleeves all the time, but still, got to keep your right arm warm. Yeah, it's just part of what you had to do. I mean, uh, you were given that jacket in the spring because they knew early uh, during the season you're going to need it. Uh, and if I was lucky to get on with a walk or base hit or whatever, put the jacket on, stay warm, and uh, hope that. Uh, Things worked. Remember back in the day, those wool sleeves were kind of standard issue. Guys Definitely. Were wearing the, I mean, you probably wore them in Arlington the old, in the heat. The old Wilson <laughs> wool sleeve skirsies. Man, they were yeah. they were warm. You go through about three of those a start. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it was nice to have your body warm, and I I was I wore long johns too. Two and one on Ryan Braun. Rondon from the stretch. And that is low. Three and one. Uh, I see your Twitter handle here. Do you tweet a lot at Fergie Jenkins 31? No, I don't. My foundation probably does. Got it. I don't tweet. <laughs> I don't Facebook either. <laughs> <laughs> I text, use my phone, okay. stay in touch with people and my family. Perfect. That is a strike. No argument last time from what, when Braun was rung up looking this time. Not so happy with that call. He was on his way to first base. Bottom of the zone. Not good to show up the umpire. <laughs> now it just comes back to haunt you. If you could get that call every time, that's where guys would live. Definitely. That one was up. On a night like this, that is all right. Wind blowing sure, in that's across. It. Yep. That's it. Just an easy fly ball. Well, you got the stretch coming up here. You've done it many times, but I know it's always a thrill, isn't it? Oh, it's enjoyable. I mean, get out there and do a little singing. And as a, as a Baptist, I used to sing quite a bit in the choir, but I was much younger. <laughs> much younger. <laughs> well, you do a great job with it, and I know the fans are excited. So have some fun tonight, Fergie. Thank and you. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate as it. always. My pleasure. You're always right, welcome with Thanks us. Thank you. The great Fergie Jenkins coming up with our seventh inning stretch is Jonathan Lucroy. Will bat with two outs. Ground ball to third. Valbuena up with it. Here comes Fergie with the stretch. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. One, two, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take to the park up by me some peanuts and cracker jacks i don't care if i ever get back for his root 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 for the copies if they don't win it's a shame for it's one two three strikes you're out at the old ball game all right guys how about getting some runs, guys? Let's go.
on this bitterly cold night, but got the crowd up and excited. Here you go. <laughs> One way to stay warm, I guess. Like, who are you? What a, what a coincidence that both guys with horse masks end up sitting right next to each other tonight. And each other saying, why the long face? <laughs> Lillibridge takes ball one. Steve Clevenger on deck for Rondone. It's off the front foot. That's foul. Start seeing some bullpen action for the Brewers. Like Michael Gonzalez will start the throw. Got some lefties coming up after Lillibridge. Pitch. Bounce to first. Backhanded play by Betancourt. And he Feeds Peralta on the base. Three to one it goes. The last two, three, four, five, six, seven outs have all been ground ball outs. Well, is the lefty getting ready? Perhaps for a potential confrontation with Rizzo. If the Cubs get a little something going here. On a night like tonight, you want to give your relievers maybe a little extra time. To Get cranked up. Base hit in the left, and here comes the tying run to the plate. Well, that's a great matchup there. You could see that coming. Clevenger has that good off field stroke with Peralta throwing all those two seamers moving away. That just really plays to his strength. And he's a guy that's not going to try to pull this pitch. Loves to shoot it the other way. Get through the 5-5 uh, five, five hole, as Tony Gwynn used to call it. The Jesus can play that game, too. Saw Marmel yesterday's first scoreless inning of the year. Yeah, I got a, a, a good tweet yeah. from Brian Kozlowski referring to the year baseball card. On the record you struck out the first eight batters. The game in 1986. Said, so does that mean JD could not strike out the pitcher? <laughs> Was that true? Well, uh, it, 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 is, it isn't. There's no guarantee. I would have struck out the pitcher, uh, but they pinch hit for the pitcher. Dennis Powell was pitching, and they pinch hit with Larry C. and well, popped up the second base. That's not right. So you were way ahead that day early, huh? Um, oh, getting the right. Past the bullpen. Clevenger on his way to third. It's a double for De Jesus. So now the Cubs a single away potentially from tying this one up. Now the lefties come through. First Clevenger going the other way, and then De Jesus yanking one down the first base line. Cubs right where they want to be. Back to back hits. Two runners in scoring position. Castro and Rizzo do up. Trying to throw that sinker down and away, and, and Jesus essentially cuts it off. It wasn't out on that edge, and he was able to get out in front of it and yank it down the line. Down a couple of runs, David Bell. Throws a stop sign up for Clevenger. Small sample size. 
The Cubs haven't scored after second and third one out. However, the Brewers pitchers have allowed at least a run to score every time here in the early going. Peralta to Castro. Chopped foul. Well, Ron Renneke showing a lot of confidence in his young right hander, allowing the Cubs middle of the order to face him here for the fourth time with the game on the line. It's an opportunity to tie the ball game. Looks like Axford's going to jump up there and join Gonzalez. Owen oh two on Starlin. Time now to look at our AT&T U-verse replays. A tough inning on defense for the Cubs. Castro with that errant throw. And this was a hit. Did everything he could to keep the ball on the infield. And as the Brewers were able to get three runs in that inning. Find out what's possible with products and services from AT&T. We think possible. It's the only inning the Brewers scored a run that is a swing and a miss for strike three. I think no. I got no tip. Okay, he yeah. stayed alive. Wasn't sure he took that long walk back toward the dugout. Peralta who's had a very good sinker all night long, throwing some real dandies here in this sequence to Castro. He just got a piece of that one to stay alive. This pitch starts knee high and then just keep dive bombing out of the zone. So another 0 2 in on the hands 95 and nasty. Well this is where you've got to be willing to shorten your stroke. What we were talking about earlier in the game and talking with Dale before the game today. Eliminate the leg kick quiet the lower body trust your hands just try to hit a line drive somewhere put it in play. Infields back ground ball about anywhere gets one run home. The base hit that leaves the infield should score two. Everything in that that two seam runner that's sinking boring fastball. Peralta would have a very hard time trying to throw his fastball away to a right handed hitter with any consistency. Go out there here with something. Slider. Run will score. Segura picks it up. Castro's out by a half step. Clevenger in to make it three to two. So the two Cubs runs have come on RBI ground outs. The other one from the guy coming up, Rizzo. And Ron Renneke is going to hobble out of that visitor's dugout to make the move. He's paddling a bad back. So the mother superior is coming out to make the move. Nice play here by Segura on the run. But the Cubs are one closer. Here comes Gonzalez, the lefty. We'll be back.
congratulations from his pitching coach Rick Kranitz. And here's veteran lefty Michael Gonzalez against Anthony Rizzo. De Jesus at second, he represents the tying run. Here we go. Smothered by Lucroy. Going to hang in there against a tough left hander so far. Anthony, uh, nothing for six with five punch outs against Southpaws. Talking with Dale Swain about his struggles against lefties, and Dale said honestly, he's he's just kind of in a funk overall. Two walks and an RBI ground out against the righty tonight, Peralta. In his career 191 against lefties with five home runs. Gonzalez from the far third base side of the rubber, and that one is fair for Rizzo. De Jesus will score the tying run. Rizzo on his way to second. He will pull up with a double. Picked a good time for his first hit against a lefty. It's 3 3. Big time swing of the bat right there by Anthony Rizzo. And Cup fans with a reason to celebrate. Hanging tough against the lefty. Trying to go breaking ball away. It stays in the zone, and he just reaches out and yanks it into that right field corner. That'll be it for Gonzalez. Faces one batter. The tying run in. So Peralta can't get a win, and Travis Wood will not get a loss. He's going to go with John Axford. The former closer now pitching in the seventh inning. We'll be back. Have the the guy who was the Brewers closer to start the year pitching here in the seventh inning. And you have the Cubs closer from opening day warming up in the bullpen. John Axford and Carlos Marmel. Axford was told yesterday for the time being he will not pitch in safe situations. And Marmel was told over the weekend in Atlanta. Yeah, it's kind of ironic because. Learned a tie ball game here in the seventh inning, so it has very much the feel of a safe situation. It's not like this is a blowout game where you're just coming in to get a little work, looking for that soft landing to gain confidence. It's crunch time. So Axford will face Soriano with Rizzo there at second base and two outs. His velocity down this year. A uh, couple of ticks. He uh, averaged 96.2 on the fastball last year, 94.1, according to fan graphs. So far this year, he's allowed at least one homer in every outing to this point. So, a new ball game, 3 3, and the pitch to Soriano is a breaking ball low and outside. 
Now that pitch, the slider is one he used to use a lot more often. He hasn't used it much so far this season. Maybe that's a point of emphasis tonight. And I think it's part of the game plan too when facing Soriano. The right hander out there breaking ball away is the way a lot of people go against Alfonso. Axford had been throwing his curveball almost exclusively in terms of a breaking ball to start the year. But back to back sliders and the 1 1. Fly ball to center. You saw Gomez break back, now comes in a little bit. And that is out number three. The Cubs tie it, however. RBIs from Castro and Rizzo, and it's 3 3. Carlos 0 and 1 with the, an inflated ERA through four appearances. One save, he blew one. I mentioned he worked in yesterday's game. A lot of hit, a walk, a couple of strikeouts, but no runs. And there's action in the Cubs bullpen. Russell and Fujikawa are throwing now. Slider strike to Alex Gonzalez. They're getting ready just in case, and it looks like Dale Sway may be inclined at some point to ask for more than three outs for Fujikawa tonight. Round ball to second, Lillibridge. One away now, Gomez. In action. For Milwaukee, that's Alfredo Figaro. And happy feet from Gomez. This time, however, he was looking to bunt. Sometimes to open up and that slider flattens out on him. Arm 
Apple off the mound. What a catch by Rizzo. I'm not sure Marmel did apply the tag. As Rizzo had to make the catch right up near the heel of his glove. Now that was a heck of a play. Marmel trying to uh, tag the speedy. Gomez flying by, missed him, had the presence of mind instead of trying to buy the call to go ahead and finish the play. Looks like he's running the triple option there. He fakes the handoff and then goes upfield to Rizzo. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough wow. catch. You get the base runner. The ball's got a little something something on it, and he still manages to catch it and corral it and hang on tight. Slider backed up on Segura. Lined out of play. Stay tuned. Immediately following our broadcast, the WGN News is coming up. Mark Sapelsa, Micah Mater, Dan Roan, and Tom Skilling. Right field, Sherholtz chasing after it. It is a fair ball. Going to rattle around out there. Segura already on his way to third. And he will be stopped by Ed Cedar. And Segura injured himself. Looks like the right ankle. Yeah, as he was applying the brakes after an aggressive turn of third base. Segura. Second extra base hit of the night drives this one just rides that wind down the right field line and some tricky angles down there kicks away from Shearholz so Segura who runs well any little misplay Aaron relay throw and he might have been able to circle the bases. I don't know if it was when he stopped maybe it was when he hit the bag. Well the injury he suffered over the weekend was a left quad bruise but it looks like it is his right foot or ankle. Looking back, and he takes his eye off the base and catches the. Oh, yeah. Right there. It's a little awkward and then rolls it a little bit. So he will stay in after the two out triple. Ground ball, Castro diving stop, up with it quickly, throw to first, inning over. Big time play. Yeah. Nice body control. He got up, made a strong throw, and we remain tied into the bottom of the eighth.
tied with an excellent defensive play. And the Cubs will go back to work on offense. Not had a leadoff man reach base tonight. This would be the ideal time to do it. Holds one at bat against Axford in his career. He's nothing for one. From the stretch, the first pitch is low. The fastball. Starters get no decisions. Peralta went six and two thirds. Wood six and a third. Each allowed three runs, two earned. And the leadoff man will get on. And Sherholtz will be in scoring position. It's a double. Ball from Axford, middle away, just a good solid swing the other way by Sheerholtz. Great opportunity to take this lead. I get to play it. Let him swing, push it along. They feel pretty adept at hitting the ball the other way, so they may just go ahead and let him try to drive the run in. Nothing else hit the ball on the ground to the right side to advance Sheerholtz. Uh, he's showing bunt. Yeah. He has a grand total of zero sack hits as a big leaguer. Thanks. That was a slider, two and oh. Going bunt, and he sees that slide ball coming towards his coconut. Might turn him loose here, 2 0. Assuming he might get a fastball to swing at. Nope. He'll keep it on. Oh, self defense. Can't believe that ball didn't hit him. So he gets down his first career sacrifice. I mentioned in his. One of his earlier at bats, how he stands right on top of the plate, and as he was squaring to bunt, I mean, that back foot's almost off the corner. <laughs> An amazingly good bunt. You can second guess the technique, the decision to even try to bunt that ball. I don't think he had much choice. If he doesn't bunt, it's going to hit him in the belly button. So it's up to Valbuena with one out. They've got two shots here to get him in. And the infielders talk about it. This meeting will be broken up by Alan Porter. Fujikawa is ready for the ninth. Would love to come in with a one run lead. And the pitch in the dirt. He's ready in the Brewer bullpen. Field drawn in here, of course. That's a tax for might have been luck. Don't feel like you have to give in if you end up walking him. That sets up a double play. Get out. They can squeeze. Now they're going to put him on. Lillibridge on deck and he will. 
Bad with runners at first and third. People that argue that you know, for the pace of the game, they should eliminate the intentional walk. You just tell the guy to go to first base. And it will not be Lillibridge, it'll be Deanna Navarro instead. I saw a game in the minor leagues end once. An intentional walk situation. The catcher split out to take the, take the uh, intentional ball, tangled up his feet, fell down. The ball went to the backstop, and the winning run scored. There's the potential for some. Wackiness. Here's the pitching coach Granitz out. Rick to talk it all over. How they're going to defend the situation here with Navarro up. Rick's getting three seconds worth here. Talking fast out there as home plate umpires out to the mound. Yeah, he was delivering a, you know, not just a message to Axford as to how they wanted to go after Navarro, but talking to his infielders as to how they're going to play this situation with first and third and one out. Morrow not a speedy guy, so the middle infielders are going to stay back and play for two. Corner men in. First and third in the tie ball game, and the pitch to Navarro is outside. Bottom of the order here now, and on deck in the pitcher spot is Scott Hairston. The 1 0 outside. Break. <laughs> Axford has thrown was the double by Sherholtz because while Castillo did bunt that ball fair, I mean, it was way in off the plate. And he missed on two to Valbuena before intentionally walking him. He really hasn't been anywhere near his target this inning. They are loaded up. Bunch of two seam runners from Axford trying to get Navarro to chase. He would not, and that's going to do it for Axford. Bases loaded, one out. Figaro summoned. Cubs trying to take their first lead tonight when we come back.
certainly Brewer non roster invitee to make the club. He wore number 76 during the spring. Down to number 45 tonight. Bases loaded, one out. Pinch hitter Scott Hairston at the dish. Ball one. Now what is that, nine consecutive bad ones? Yeah, under pressure, bases loaded, doesn't want to make a mistake, hoping that the hitter will get himself out. And that's the challenge for Harrison here. You want to be aggressive, you get a pitch to hit, you want to turn it loose. But you got to make sure you get a strike. One hit was a home run in Atlanta. Fly ball to center. Gomez. Coming in, Sherholtz ready to tag. Here he comes. The throw to the plate is not in time. Cubs lead four to three. Scott Hairston with a sack fly. Now the Cubs do cash in that leadoff double. Three of the four runs scoring on outs. Tonight, a couple of fielders' choice ground balls, and now this sack fly just deep enough. Gomez has got a big arm out there. Throws just a little bit up the line, and by the time LaCroix comes back with the tag, Sheerholtz is able to beat him to home plate. The other two runners tagged as well. They knew this throw was going to go all the way through. And Deonor Navarro has been removed. Al Alberto Gonzalez will run at second. It's, you know, such a game of inches and, and just little differences. And, and Gomez had been able to catch that ball in a better position with his throwing hand closer to his glove. He could have got that ball out a little bit quicker, maybe. And the only bench player left available for Dale is Dave Sapelt. Hopefully that won't be an issue now with a 4-3 lead at least going to the ninth. Fouled off. So at the moment. Kyuji Fujikawa it will not be his first save situation as a Cub, but it will be his first since he was anointed the closer. And he'll face a pinch hitter, Aoki and Weeks. If he can get all three, he will not have to face Ryan Braun. Here's Valbuena, followed by Gonzalez, and now a three-run edge. Now you just knew sooner or later for DeJesus things were going to start to fall. Quality of the bats are just too good. Three consecutive hits tonight, and they're trying to crowd him with a fastball. Uh, he's just not going to let you in there. Too quick. Dropping the head on that inside fastball, a big two run single. A little breathing room. And Carlos Marmel could get the win tonight. He is the pitcher of record after his scoreless eighth inning. Bounced pickoff throw. So a season high six runs for the Cubs. Trailed three nothing for most of the ball game. Woo. Then two in the seventh. After they got one in the fifth and three big ones here in the eighth. Job by Travis Wood tonight. No decision for him, but the good work he did after that rocky second inning, a real key in this ball game.
Figaro's 1 1. Out of play. Another reminder the WGN News follows our broadcast. All three of those runs charged to John Axford, whose struggles continue. Axford threw 16 pitches, only four strikes. Two of the balls he threw were intentional. Still, his command seemed way off as De Jesus takes off and gets second. He did not hesitate. As soon as he saw that ball in the dirt, he was off. So many times offensive clubs playing for a run, bunting a guy over, and then all the, uh, it's all about preventing that run. Intentional walk, too cautious to Navarro, extra base runners, and the Cubs cash him in. Up to right, Aoki should get it. He does. And QG Fujikawa will try to save it. Year of Major League Baseball from shutouts to walk. The official beer of Major League Baseball from shutouts to walk-offs We've been celebrating the greatest moments in Major League Baseball for over 30 years great times are waiting grab some buds Honda is it your local Honda dealer or go to shophonda.com for current offers and by AT&T find out what's possible with products and services from AT&T rethink possible Anthony Rizzo with a couple of RBIs in this game. Alberto Gonzalez, who just pinch ran and scored the sixth run of the ball game, stays in and plays second. And QG Fujikawa will face Logan Schaefer, a pinch hitter. Fastball high for ball one. Fujikawa. Anxious, I'm sure, to get back on the mound after struggling in his last outing on Saturday. 
in Atlanta. Gave up three runs. Len mentioned his first chance to nail one down since taking over for Marmel in this closer spot. Job he did very well for a very long time in Japan. 219 career saves for Henshin, the Henshin Tigers. He got the save on opening day through two pitches. 93 and a strike. One and two. Three with a little late life, a little hop on that heater. He'll cut his fastball. A good split finger pitch. One up top. Oh, how about that? Ball <laughs> strike three. Change of direction. Wellington Castile wanted that fastball neck high. And whether by design or accident, Fujikawa either disregarded him or just missed his spot by two feet. Strike on Aoki. Left-handed hitters. That's one thing Fujikawa's done well here. A lot of first pitch strikes in his uh, early appearances. And when you've got a three-run lead, that's the game plan. Be aggressive. You need to tiptoe around anybody. Nobody's on base. These guys had to have faced each other a fair amount. In the Central League in Japan outside. Fairly large contingent of Japanese media here at the ballpark in this series. This is a big matchup in that regard. Called strike two. <laughs> Watching him over there in the press box, and for every pitch they're looking up at the televisions overhead. So they assess this matchup between the uh, two former Japanese stars. Two balls, two strikes. Ground ball to third. Little bobble. And the throw gets by. And it looked like Valbuena was just a little flat-footed over there. He bobbled twice and then threw wild. It'll be an error. Valbuena usually a very dependable defender. This time not able to handle this ball cleanly. Really get down very well. Then had to hurry the throw, and they weren't going to get him anyway. Once he bobbled it, three errors for the Cubs tonight, and it's weeks. Home debut for Fujikawa. One and one. Braun on deck. Trying to stay warm tonight. It's been a challenge. It's 
basically a race to the finish line. Can you get three outs before the Brewers score three runs? And again, it calls for an aggressive approach here to Weeks with Ryan Braun on deck. Do not want to give that man a chance to tie the ball game. Yeah, the wind's blowing in tonight. This is a challenge type of night. Ball is not carrying. Three and one. I'm going to throw it in there and see how far he can hit it. He did. Challenged him with a three run heater. Three one heater right down the middle. A little late. Cubs two outs away from snapping a four game skid. They get their first win since Thursday in Pittsburgh. The three two to week swing and a miss. Two down. Nice comeback by Fujikawa. Fell well behind, had to challenge, and did back to back fastballs right there for weeks, and he could not get to either one of them. on their feet being rewarded for sticking around on this cold night. Big comeback for the Cubs. Five runs over their last two innings. Made a run at it and yesterday's ball game came up just a little bit short. Three out of five in the late inning so far this year. He's been good no matter what the situation is. Now hard to find a category in which he struggles. Pretty much pencil him in every year for 100 plus RBIs, 100 runs scored, hit for a high average, OPS, the top of the league, the perennial MVP candidate. And we talked earlier in the ball game about what he has done against the Cubs and in particular in this ballpark. And that's why it was so important to get weeks. Hit to extend the inning. It'll bring up Luke Croy. This guy could just flat out right. Well, he has in this series five hits. Still might not be 100% with the neck. Missed the fastball. Both times. Yeah, Castillo wanted that fastball up, but 
unlike earlier when he came way up out of his crouch and then Fujikawa threw the ball down, he just flashed the mitt up above his mask. Sometimes that can be disconcerting when the catcher comes way out of his crouch like that. It's hard to hit that spot. Just you know, put the glove up there, let, let the guy know where you want to go with it, and then turn him loose. Fujikawa, a good life on that four seamer up. Trying it again here. Either praying or keeping her hands warm or both. Yeah, multitasking. The one two. Popped him up behind second. Gonzalez waving his arms. He's got it. Cubs win. Cubs win. They come back from a three nothing deficit. Score the final six runs of the game. Marmel gets the win. Fujikawa the save. And some clutch hitting tonight. That's a feel good win right there. Contributions from a lot of different individuals. Big late inning hits. Great job by the pitching staff. The beleaguered Marmel gets the W. Fujikawa, the new closer, gets the save. And they get to play that song.